All right, so I want us to get right into today's teaching. And the teaching is this. Faith needs hope. Faith needs hope. All right, so I want us to go down. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And it says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Right, let's break this down. Hope. What is hope? Hope is a promise that's been given to you. Listen carefully. Hope is a promise that has been given to you. So if I say to you, I want to give you something, then you've got an expectation, then there is hope. All right? So you now have hope in your life. Now, Satan comes, first of all, to come and destroy that hope. He comes to take that hope away. Because if you've got hope, you've got potential to have faith. Alright? In other words, if there's a promise, I can believe or I can trust in the promise. I need the promise first. God needs to give me some indication of what He has for me, what promise He has for me, where He wants to take me, what He wants to do with me. Now, the minute I have a promise from the Lord, my hope is there. Then my faith can bold. Here comes the challenge. Do you have hope? Now, when I heard Pastor Lair say this, it really made a lot of sense to me and it really resonated with me. And he mentioned the statement. And he said this, once you've got hope, you have a choice. You have a choice to believe or not to believe. In other words, have faith or doubt. Okay? So once a promise is given, you have a choice to believe it or not to believe it or doubt that God is going to come through for you. Now, that's where a lot of Christians come into, uh, they get untangled. Because they don't know, they have this idea, God will come through for others, but not for me. God will come through for that person, but not for me. I want to tell you right now that that's a lie. God wants to come through for each and every one of us. But let's take this thing. So there's two levels here. Okay, let's look at it carefully. Number one, Satan wants to get us into fear that we don't have any hope. In other words, God promises something, but the world promises something too. So the one promises you hope, the other one gives you hopelessness. So now you've got a choice. Here's your first choice. Am I going to go with God or am I going to go with the world? You know, if you listened to the world, you would have seen that COVID was hopeless. Right? We were all going to eventually get sick and die. And it was a hopeless thing that was declared over the world. But God's word does not say hopelessness. It gives hope and it gives life and it gives blessing. So our first point is when a hope is given, when a promise is given, do you believe it or do you believe the hopeless report? So you're going to have that your first choice. Then your second choice is whether I believe God's going to come through for me, even though I know that he's promised something, or whether I'm going to doubt it and have unbelief in my heart. You see, if we want to get somewhere with God, first step, we have to go with God and not with the world. Second step is we have to believe what God said and not anything else. Many of us have heard the prophetic words over our nation now. All right? We've taken 21 days. We've given you prophetic words over the nation. And that's not all of them. That's just some. Now we know that there is a promise. We know that there is hope for this nation. Okay? So now we've got to decide. Because the world is saying there's no future for our children. There's no future for career opportunities. There's no future for this and this and this. And they just give you all of the negative. So my first step is, do I believe God or do I believe 
what is going on around me. So now, if I believe the prophetic word, then I know that there is hope. Right? So I know there's a prophecy over South Africa. I know that God has got a plan for South Africa, which includes me and my family. Now I'm going to make a decision. Do I believe God or do I doubt God that He's going to come through? Now I want to tell you right now, even though there's a promise, every one of us are going to operate between faith and doubt all the time as Christians. Let me give you a very good example. Peter. Now Peter's a brilliant guy with us. Okay? Jesus Christ says, he, 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 he first starts off with the audacity to speak to Jesus and say, hey, you're walking on the water. If it's you, say, come. So what does Jesus do? Say, come, Peter. Come walk on the water with me. Peter listens to the word. There's hope. A promise was given. Come, Peter. Come to me. So what does Peter do? He steps out on the water. And the Bible says that he had faith. He believed the word. Come. And he was walking on water. But then he took his eyes off the promise and he started to look at the situation. The minute he looked at the situation, doubt came and he started to sink. Now the same happens with us. When things are going well, we can give you a promise. You're going to believe God. You're going to stand together. We're going to fight together. We're going to do whatever. But let something go contrary to that. And you look at the world and you go, whoa, this is coming in big waves here. Yes, it's going to come in big waves. What do you think the world's going to do? What do you think Satan is going to do? He's going to try everything to stop the promise of the Lord. And so when this comes, don't be surprised. Keep your focus. You know, as the reports came more and more, they were going into more lockdowns and all sorts of things. We had to keep our focus and say, God, December is going to be open. All right. Now we're not even just talking about the fear. We are talking about doubt. We are talking about doubt. People are asking for the scripture. Hebrews 11 verse 1. And we are talking about, do I believe the promise that God gave? Listen carefully to the scripture now to make a lot more sense. Now, faith is the substance in other words, I can see it happening of things hoped for. The promise that was given, let me give you an example. December will be open. The evidence was not there. Everything was going contrary, but we believe God. We stood on his word. And we stood on his word and all of a sudden December was open. Let me tell you something. December being open shifted something in our nation. Everybody just having that time to have a break and a rest and a, and a, and a uh, socializing back with family and friends. It shifted something in our nation for the good. I want to tell you right now, it has built up faith. It has built up men and women who are saying, listen, we can change this. And so I want to tell you that the substance of what we hoped for was what? December was open. God moved. God did something for our nation. And so right now we are going to use that same faith, that same belief in over every prophecy that has been given over our nation. We have hope. We have more hope than you've ever wished to have. Because there are literally tons of prophetic words and promises that we can hold on to. You just need one. But the point is we have many and we've got God's word. And God says that he can turn anything and he will shift anything. He will change anything. We need to start believing God. And so saints, as we come around the table today, I want us to celebrate the fact that we have hope. That we don't have fear. And most of all, we don't have unbelief. And so this morning, as we take of the elements, I want you to celebrate the fact that we've got hope. And where does our hope come from? Jesus Christ. 
the promises that he has given us, the power that he has made available to us, the word of God that shifts and stands and will never be um, diminished no matter what anybody tries. Let me tell you something. Do you know how many people have tried to discredit the Bible to try and sit down and make it that it's just a book? They've tried everything for years and years and most of them they went to discredit it got born again. So I want to tell you right now, the word of God is solid. The word of God is our basis, our authority, and we believe it. So the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you, take in remembrance of me. He took the cup, he said, this is my cup. That was shed, uh, my blood that was shed for you, take in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ was shed for what? Our salvation, protection, and provision. And as we take of these elements this morning, saints, let us remind ourselves that we have hope. We live in a country of hope in Jesus' name. And we are going to see the miracles of God take place because we believe what God said. Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, action, motive, intention. God, wash us clean as snow today. God, help us not to have unbelief. Lord, I ask you to forgive us for our unbelief. But Lord, help us to have faith in you, to trust in your word, to trust in what you have promised over us, over our nation. Lord, I thank you for the hope that is for us. Lord, that you will make a way and supernaturally things will prosper. Lord, I thank you right now that as we take of the elements, that it will become so real to us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, I thank you right now that the Spirit of God would dwell inside of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, that every form of sickness be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that the Spirit of God quicken our mortal bodies. And Lord, I thank you that you are going to do something supernatural inside of our bodies. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to bless you this morning. I want to tell you that it's an amazing day. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are ready to do what He has called us to do. I want to remind you at 9.30 this morning, we are going to release a video of some of the, the photos and the things that came through with the people who dedicated their towns and their villages uh, you see me across South Africa. Okay, I must just say, we obviously can't use every single one. Please, guys, please understand, okay? So if you sent in one and you didn't get it in the little video clip, please understand, I did not want to sit here for 30 minutes just seeing every single town, okay? Which is awesome. I mean, it is amazing. It was amazing the number of responses that we got and, the, and the, the, uh, the pictures and the WhatsApps and the messages of people who stood and blessed and dedicated their, their, their town, city, Torpy, village, farm, whatever it was. I want to thank you so much, South Africa, for standing together and releasing the power of God over our nation. God has got a plan. God has got a purpose. And I know that we are going to get to where God has for us. Amen. So please, 9.30 today, we are going to release the video and you can have a look at what God has done, okay, over our nation as the people prayed and released the power of God and just dedicated their cities, okay, um, at, on Sunday at 12 o'clock. Amen. All right. I want to pray over the economy today. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray over our economy. Lord, I thank you that every sector of our economy is blessed and prosperous in Jesus' name. And Lord, that because the Christians are standing strong, Lord, that the companies will see supernatural deals, supernatural connections, and supernatural finance flow in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in and through each believer's life. Lord, right now, I pray over this COVID situation, I command it to die, dissipate, and to leave our nation. Lord, we declare our nation open, free, mask free, um, state of disaster gone in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that as we release blessing and life over our nation, we will see the power of God move in Jesus' name. Father, right now, I pray for every single student as they've started their new year. Father, I pray right now that you will just help them and assist them with their schoolwork. 
And Lord, that they'll be able to catch up anything that they have lost from last year. Father, I pray your blessing and anointing upon each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, let's get into our declaration. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life. So saints, I want to bless you this morning. I want to say go out with might, go out with valor and go and do what God has called you to do. I want to remind you that it's our school of prayer tonight. 7 o'clock tonight, uh, Pastor Amanda will be on. And I've already had the email, uh, the notes to you. So you will have the notes. All right. So you are ready to get equipped in Jesus' name. So we'll see you tonight at 7. Tomorrow morning, I'm right back with communion at 9 o'clock. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I just want to remind you, if you want to be part of our WhatsApp, if you want to get the messages on WhatsApp so you can send it on a daily basis, just WhatsApp me the word add, A-double-D, that's all you say, and you'll get a link. Choose one, just join one group, okay? So if you want to be part of our WhatsApps, just go and do that and uh, just send the word, all right? Everybody's got my number, I'm sure, but I'll give it again, 082 659 0826593224. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Amen.